the first epistle of John, introduction to 1 John, 1 verses 1 through 4, lesson 1. Introduction 1. When Jesus came to earth, he came not only to live a life, but to give a life. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. John 10, verse 10. 2. The Gospel of John was designed to produce faith so that we might have life. John 20, verses 30 through 31. 3. However, it is the first epistle of John discusses the nature of that life in great detail. 1 John 3, verse 14. 4 that we might be sure to live the sort of life God offers through his Son, Jesus Christ. A careful study of 1 John is in order. Background information. A. The author. 1. It will be assumed in the course of this study that the author is John, the beloved disciple of Jesus. 2. Similarities between this epistle and the Gospel of John certainly suggest internal evidence for this conclusion. Three, there is also external evidence that this John is the author. A. Polycarp, a close associate of John, appears to make reference to this epistle at the beginning of the second century in a letter to the Philippians. B. Arrhenius, a student of Polycarp, quoted from it and attributed it to John. B. The recipients, 1. No one is specifically mentioned. 2. John may have been in Ephesians at the time, and that this was a general epistle to the Christians throughout Asia Minor. 3. However, John's comment in 1 John 2 verses 20 and 27 suggests that John may have been addressing a particular group of Christians possessing certain spiritual gifts. C. Date. 1. Estimations range from 60 A.D. to 100 A.D. 2. Most modern scholarship places it around 95 A.D., but there is also good reason for believing it was written prior to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. D. Purpose. 1. As declared by John throughout his epistle, he wrote a that your joy may be full. 1 John 1 verse 4. B. That you may not sin. 1 John 2 verse 1. C. That you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5 verse 13 A. D. That you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. 1 John 5 verse 13 B. 2. While these reasons may state the positive side of John's purpose, it appears he also responding to errors that were prevalent at the time. 1 John 2 verse 26 A. If not fully developed in John's day, there was at least a precursor to Gnosticism. 1. Those who came to be called Gnostics. A. Claimed to have a superior knowledge. Word of knowledge is Gnosis. 2. Believed all matter was evil. A. Therefore God did not create or have anything to do with the material universe. B. Therefore Christ could not have come in the flesh. 1 John 4 verses 1 through 3. 1. One branch of Gnosticism, Docetism, said that Jesus only seemed to be physical. 1 John 1 verse 1. 2. Certitudinous taught that Jesus was physical, but that the Christ came upon him at his baptism and left before his death, so that the Christ spirit never suffered. 1 John 5 verse 6. C. Their application to everyday living took two different directions, since all matter was thought to be evil. 1. Some thought one should abstain altogether from anything that would satisfy the flesh. 2. Others claimed it did not matter what one did in the flesh. 
it was all evil anyway. And to have full knowledge, it was proper to, to explore everything. Many of John's comments in this epistle appear to address these false teachings. John's aim in writing this epistle, A, concerns the word of life, one which was from the beginning. A, John may have reference to the creation of the world, John 1, verse 1. B, or he may have reference to the beginning of the gospel, 1 John 2, verse 17, 13, 24, chapter 3, verse 11. Two, this word of life was A, heard, B, seen with our eyes, C, looked upon, D, handled, all emphasizing that this word was real in the flesh, an obvious reference to Jesus, John 1, verse 1 and verse 14. B, to declare the eternal life, one which was A, with the Father, B, and then manifested to the apostles who had seen and were bearing witness. Two, again, this is an obvious reference to Jesus Christ. Three, but notice the use of the neuter gender throughout this passage. A, the emphasis appears to be on the life which Jesus had, especially that which is eternal, that eternal life. B, it is the same life which we can possess if we truly believe in the name of the Son of God. 1 John 5 verses 11 through 13. 4. Thus John is focusing on the eternal life which Jesus offers and made possible by his coming in the flesh. C. That you may have fellowship with us. 1. Here is the reason for declaring the word of life the eternal life. 2. By declaring this life revealed by Jesus and through Jesus, fellowship is possible. A. Fellowship involves the idea of sharing communion. B. The sharing communion that the apostles have is with the Father and his Son. 3. John wanted his readers to participate in this same sharing. A that you also may have fellowship with us. B, that you can experience what we are experiencing. D, that your joy may be full. One, it is fellowship with the Father and Son that makes the life of a Christian so full of joy. Two, that just as Jesus came to give us abundant life, John 10 verse 10, so John now writes A, that we may be sure to have fellowship with the Father and His Son, in whom is eternal life. John 17, verse 3. B. So that our joy may be full. Conclusion 1. From 1 John 1, verse 1 through 4, then we learn that fullness of joy comes only when we are in fellowship with the Father and the Son. 2. Only then do we have that eternal life, which was first manifested in the flesh by Jesus himself, and now giving only through Jesus. 1 John 5, verses 11 through 13. The first epistle of John, introduction to 1 John, lesson 1, the end.